Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. I actually did this as a buddy read with a bunch of people. It was one of the buddy reads that I arranged when I was on my buddy reads hype. I'm going to read you the blurb. Patrick Bateman is 26 and works on Wall Street. He is handsome, sophisticated, charming and intelligent. He is also a psychopath. Taking us to a head-on collision with America's greatest dream and its worst nightmare, American Psycho is a bleak, bitter, black comedy about a world we all recognise but do not wish to confront. I have kind of mixed feelings about this. The first hundred odd pages of it was super boring but I think it was kind of deliberate. It was to, you know, set the seed of Bateman as this Wall Street exec asshole who doesn't care about anyone, you know. Um, it was very much a throwback to that time in the 80s and the 90s when, you know, Wall Street was the in thing. And uh, I would like to think that we've moved on as society now. However, there are still a lot of lessons we can learn. What I thought was particularly interesting is these incessant references to Donald Trump, which only make this more relevant now than it was when it was written. In terms of some of the violent scenes, I don't know, it felt almost a bit gratuitous and unnecessary. Like, I don't mind a good violent scene. I just thought, I don't know, it was a bit boring. The whole book was a bit like that, really. It wasn't subtle, you know? You you got what it was trying to tell you, like the whole thing of like worshipping money as if it was religion. And contrasting the violence of Bateman as this sort of serial killer dude with the sort of violent attitude of Wall Street. It, it wasn't done subtly at all. Because it was so unsubtle and it just hit you around the face with the message of it. It just kind of annoyed me at times. I did still think it was okay. It was written okay. It reminded me of American Irvin Welsh, but not as good. Like, Irvin Welsh tends to write about these sort of violent, down and out, you know, working class Scottish characters. Whereas, Easton Ellis was writing about these sort of affluent Americans. And so because of that, I didn't really care. Like, no offence Americans, but... I mean, it's easier for me, coming from a working class background in the UK, to relate to working class British people than rich Americans, basically. I'm going to go through and check out some of the flags that I put in it. I do think most of these were references to Donald Trump. And I also think the fact that Donald Trump is used throughout this as like this icon of everything that these, this psychopath idolises, in the same way that you might have, you know, a racist idolising Hitler. This is a psychopath, like literally a psychopathic murderer who's obsessed with the pursuit of wealth and pretty much nothing else. And that he he idolises Donald Trump. It, it makes me think, surely you can't have voted for Donald Trump if you've read this book. I wouldn't say this book is necessarily anti-Trump, but the associations that it makes with Trump really quite concerning when you think that uh, that's what people voted for but I don't want to get into politics he's not my president so you know and also I voted in the UK elections and our Prime Minister isn't who I voted for either but then every time I've ever voted for anything the thing I've been voting against I've never voted for something I've always voted against something I don't believe in and then that things happen so I don't know how much I believe in democracy but whatever they're talking about here what uh, what women want, you see. They want a hard body who can take them to Le Cirque twice a week, get them into nails on a regular basis, or maybe a close personal acquaintance of Donald Trump. In the elevator, Frederick Dibble tells me about an item on page six or some other gossip column about Ivana Trump and then about this new Italian tie place on the Upper East Side that he went to last night with Emily Hamilton and starts raving about the great fusilli shiitake dish. Bear in mind, this was also while Trump was visiting the UK, so he was all over the news as well. And I'm just like, please stop talking about Donald Trump. Why are you giving him the airtime? That's what he wants. I, that's why I don't get why shitloads of people marched against him as well and had this inflatable Trump baby. I'm like, you do realise that's what he wants. He loves controversy. Like, just ignore him. Totally ignore him. Don't talk about him in the news. That's the best way. <laughs> Is that Donald Trump's car, I ask, looking over at the limousine stuck, as t stuck next to us on the gridlock. It's an article on your hero, Donald Trump, McDermott grins. Is that Ivana Trump, she asks, peering over my shoulder. I whirl around. Where? Where's Ivana? How could you mistake that wench for Ivana? There's, he's having this conversation, Bateman is, with this girl, and she goes, What are you going to do, she asks. Wait three years until you're 30. Four years, I say, glaring. It's four years until I'm 30. Four years, three years, three months. Oh God, what's the difference? You'll still be an old man. I'm 30 in 11 months. 
Caruthers keeps trying to placate everyone by telling us that Donald Trump is a big U2 fan. Well, that's just more of a reason to hate U2. Faded posters of Donald Trump on the cover of Time magazine cover the windows of another abandoned restaurant. Now, this is the thing is when I started noticing it, I couldn't not notice it. And th this is exactly what I mean. Like, every point that he tries to make is as unsubtle as this. It's hammered in, page after page after page. And you're just like, oh, stop it. Hi, Pat Bateman, I say, holding out my hand. Yeah? Hi, Donald Trump. My wife Ivana's in the back, he says sarcastically, taking it. Why wasn't Donald Trump invited to your party? Not Donald Trump again, Evelyn moans. Yes, exactly, Evelyn. Don't be intimidated, Daisy says. Fur is only an accessory. Don't be intimidated by it. Well, actually, fur isn't just only an accessory. It is the skin of animals often taken from them while they're still alive. I've seen footage of a coyote being skinned while still alive, and you just have this literally a fleshless coyote bleeding from, you know, head to tail, like lying there twitching. We're going to a party Donald Trump's having, I lie. I'm thinking about nothing. It's silent in the office. To break it, I point out a book on top of the desk next to the San Pellegrino bottle. The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. And then suddenly you get the reveal where he suddenly is a psycho. Because I said to begin with, it's, he's not really a psychopath, he's just a sociopath. Then he just starts randomly killing people. Having gone back through this and having had some time to think about it, I did give this a 3.5 out of 5 in my review on my website and on Goodreads, but haven't thought about it. It's a low 3. And also, like I say, while it does have some interesting stuff to say that's still relevant to our society today, it's just the way it was delivered was so clunky and so clumsy. I've got to go now anyway. My camera's almost out of space. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you read this book and